Yo, what's up with it, y'all? It's JD, and I'm back with another quick video. And today I'm out in the, on the west side of Oahu with my homeboy James. And today I'm gonna be doing a tutorial on the Korean dip. It's kind of an awkward dip, but I think it's a good progression to the supinated back lever. It's also just a pretty cool move and a good uh, strength builder when it comes down to strengthening up your bicep tendons. So I'm gonna go through a couple of progressions that I think are important that you need to do before you actually attempt the Korean dip. And uh, I'm actually gonna be, you know, kind of coaching James up uh, on his Korean dips as we're doing it, kind of coaching him through the progressions as well. This is actually, you know, surprisingly is a, is a movement that's a little bit more difficult for James. It's something that he's kind of not used to. So we're gonna, first off, I'm gonna show you guys the first progression of it. So when you're doing a Korean dip, you're gonna wanna have your wrists in a pronated, uh, in a pronated in a pronated way so basically you have to think of it if you're on this side of the bar you're going to be in a chin-up grip but then you're coming down like this and you're going to be have your wrist kind of in a reverse fashion so the first progression is actually going to get down into kind of a reverse back pull you want to keep your body as straight as possible and then lift yourself up James, why don't you give it a try? Alright, so I actually really felt that on my um, on my forearm here. I actually Keeping those wrists straight was actually pretty difficult. All right, guys, so the next progression, let's move over to the higher bar. Actually, we could just keep it right here. Actually, I like that bar. So the next progression, you know, you're probably gonna wanna start off on a little bit lower of a bar, because this one you kinda have to jump up on. But the next progression you're gonna do is just, you're just gonna hold, hold yourself at the top. So you're getting into an isometric hold. And instead of being below the bar, you're keeping yourself above the bar. So you just hold your max hold on this. This is not a, a, a comfortable position to be in at all. Puts a lot of strain on the biceps. And you'll notice once you, you kind of maxed out and you fatigued on Korean dips, that you're gonna really feel a strain in that bicep tendon. So it's really important to kind of listen to your body and do not let yourself, don't don't let your ego tell you to get more reps. So James, why don't you jump up and get into that ISO hold. You want me to uh, straight arm or keep it a little bit bent? Keep it a little bent. There you go. And, and you guys, James has extremely, extremely strong bicep tendons. He's an extremely strong person in general. And for him to kind of even fatigue like that on a movement lets you know how difficult it is. Yeah, honestly, I would see John doing the Korean dips and I I probably didn't try it for maybe three weeks. It honestly didn't look too difficult just because he had the movement pattern down and he was knocking out reps. Um, then I tried it. I was actually surprised how difficult it was. And one of the main focuses in my training is the planche. And I've been working on that for a while and what I realized is I actually have the shoulder strength for the planche but for me the straight arm and specifically that bicep tendon was weak because you know I've, I never really trained arms I never have trained biceps or triceps um, and actually I only did these for maybe a couple of days and then I actually achieved my first supinated back lever because of this progression and like we've been telling you guys, and I forget this myself sometimes too, the foundation is so important. If you're struggling with any movement, take it back one step, go to a, a easier movement and master that one first, and it's gonna make the next difficulty level that much easier to get. All right guys, since, since I got to rest a little bit, I'm gonna show you guys the actual Korean dips. So I like to do them on these higher bars, one of these days, I'll be able to figure out how to get to do them all on the actual high bars, but for the time being, this one's gonna have to do. So, I'm gonna jump up real quick, get into my, my uh, position, and then you wanna try to 
keep your legs together as much as possible. Another thing about the Korean dips, guys, is that you want to try to limit your butt brushing up against the bar, your back brushing up against the bar, because that's going to throw you off balance. And on this, this movement in particular, like your balance and your stabilization is extremely pivotal. So James, why don't you give them a try, knock out a few reps. And honestly, I love that I'm getting to show you guys this because uh, I've shown a lot of you guys the movements that I've been doing for... You know a year now year and a half so I've gotten you know tons of reps in and this is a movement I've been doing for about two weeks so it's this I'm already better than I was when I very first started but I just want to show you guys no movement comes natural to us we look awkward at first that's all part of the process it's to be expected so I'm gonna give this a shot I have no idea if I'm even gonna be able to get one Good form, keep those feet together. Good work. Good work. Good work. Good work. So you notice on that, um, you know, I brushed up against the bar a bit. It was like kind of shaky. My timing was a little bit off. Um, so you'll notice the difference in the amount of reps John has put in. So that movement pattern his neural engram has developed to where the movement starts looking smooth. And a lot of times people will ask you how to get the clean looking muscle ups or make your pull ups look cleaner or even your dips. And that comes naturally with time. The more rep repetitions you put into a movement, the more natural it looks when you do it. All right guys, so I'm all rested up. And uh, this is basically the next progression after you've been doing Korean dips for a while. And probably after you've already started doing uh, pronated grip back levers but this is the supinated grip back lever much more difficult much more difficult I cannot hold this movement as long as I could hold the uh, regular one So much strain on the forearms, so much strain on the bicep tendons. Super difficult movement, but if you want to try to play around with things, and these are kind of the intricacies of calisthenics in terms of it might not look any different than the pronated grip back lever, but there's literally probably like a five to six second difference between how long I can hold the pronated grip back lever to the supinated grip back lever. So he's showing you the difference between pronated and supinated grips and it just got me thinking there's a lot of movements that are kind of um, ego movements and the supinated back lever is not an ego movement because nobody unless they have a very trained eye is going to notice any difference so you might be able to hold you know the supinated for 15 seconds and other people are going to think you're um or i mean pronated for 15 seconds and everyone's going to think it's so much better than a supinated because you can't hold it as long. And we were talking about this too, even muscle ups, you know, for us, and a lot of times that's way easier than the other stuff we're doing, but just it is, everyone thinks it looks super impressive. So really push yourself, even if the movement doesn't look that cool or you're not gonna get as much props for that movement, that's what's gonna build you up and make you stronger. So take the ego out of it and then keep hitting it.